Hello and welcome to my Half-Life Alex. Is or will be. Chapter 3C yeah, I wish they'd let you see this map that I get to see in my headset. So we have five. Well, I appreciate you coming along. Gotta watch those uh, head crabs, the armored ones. And you have to kind of wait till they jump before you can. Uh, Shoot them. We're looking for bullets, medical stuff, and resin. So we're kind of watching out for them. I do a little at a time. like that <laughs> they kind of stir and like oh my gracious the floating headphones is the developer commentary like hacking and environmental puzzles, toner puzzles like this one are often used to relieve tension from combat and engage the player's mind in a refreshing way. This puzzle introduces a new junction type, which has two inputs and two outputs, as well as branching circuits. Functionally, it's just a simple airlock. Only one of the main combine gates can be powered on at a time, with an additional wrinkle that the smaller side gate on the return path must be powered down separately. In addition to providing a break between hectic combat encounters, this puzzle is a gameplay mechanic refresher since it's been some time since the player has seen a toner puzzle and the next ones start to ramp up in complexity. So well, that's going to be fun. Since this is our first time play, we're going to listen to the commentary from the developers. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I think we got it. If you would, look to the lower right-hand corner of the video and press that subscribe button. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything at all. Thank you. 
and YouTube allows you as the viewer to subscribe to 2,000 channels for free. So we just need one of those free subscriptions. Yeah, I think we have to turn off the electricity. And be sure to look underneath the video to the far left and you'll see our YouTube channel, GFM underscore RDG, where there's over 1,300 more videos that you can watch. Save and save often. There's the flashlight. No, I didn't do it right. Kind of prepare it. I already have one, that's why I wanted to do another one. For, uh, save and save often. That's what I always say. Make sure that I'm headed in the right direction. And I've moved too far from my area. 
because my uh, play area is not very big. Got one left. And I can't see very well. Bullets over there. And you can look underneath the video in the description, you find ways to donate and join our Patreon. Half-Life games, the flashlight was attached to the player's body, which meant that it always illuminated the world from the same angle, relative to the player's point of view. With tracked hands in VR, we had the opportunity to let players manipulate the flashlight directly, and playtesters reacted very positively to this new freedom. In fact, our earliest implementation of a flashlight in Half-Life Alex was an object that could be picked up in either hand or even set back down. This allowed the player to put the flashlight down somewhere providing illumination for themselves while they accomplished another task. Unfortunately, this presented the possibility that a player could leave the flashlight behind, which would have been a game-breaking scenario. Implementing the flashlight as a hand that the players had to hold also prevented them from holding something else in their hand, which was tedious to manage and simply too punishing of a trade-off. In particular, it meant that weapon reloading was a nightmare, because the player no longer had a free offhand to perform the reload actions. In the end, we settled on a flashlight that attaches to the offhand and turns on and off automatically. This fixes the issues with reloading in the dark, potentially losing the flashlight, and has the nice side effect of not requiring the allocation of a button to toggle the light, which is especially helpful on controllers with fewer buttons. Since the automatic on-off behavior is controlled using level logic, designers can make performance and quality trade-offs in different areas of the game. 
After all, if the player could turn the flashlight on at any time, the rendering overhead of this shadow-casting light source would have to be accounted for throughout the entire game. On the other hand, if the flashlight is known to be off in a given area, a designer can make use of the resulting rendering headroom by increasing the fidelity of the environment in other ways. Okay, now yeah, that's what I gotta do. That's what I gotta do. Last four. Okay, we're better. It's really dark. Russ? Yeah? Can you just... talk? About what? About anything. Literally anything. Well, I think that given our situation, your irrational fear of the dark is actually quite appropriate. You know, I can give you easily a hundred reasons to be terrified. Okay, that was my fault. I'll be more specific next time. Shortly after adding the flashlight to the game, we discovered the playtesters would frequently brace their gun hand with their flashlight hand. This meant that the players had to orient their flashlight hand awkwardly to align the light with their aim. We decided to make this an automatic behavior of the offhand whenever it was brought close to the grip of the gun. If you do this, you'll see that the offhand grips the gun in a natural pose, and the flashlight aligns with the aim. In fact, if you look closely at the end of the flashlight, you'll notice that it has a ball joint. This allows the flashlight to articulate based on whether the offhand is gripping the gun or not. The ball joint has four different orientations, one for each gun, 
and the neutral orientation for when the player is not supporting the gun to aim. These four orientations ensure that the flashlight is always pointed in an ideal direction for the player. In one-handed mode, the flashlight attaches to the gun handle at an orientation that is ideal for all scenarios. I do appreciate you coming along and hopefully you join us for the next video and also hopefully you'll press that free subscribe watch more of our videos consider donating and joining our patreon so until the next video thank you for watching goodbye